Do you guys like pizza? I know I do. I love pizza. I'm Italian. I'm disappointed that since I moved out here to the West Coast, there is not a real authentic East Coast Italian style pizza out here. Would you like to have a pizza party with me? Mamma mia! Make the pizza pie! Pizza pie! Felipe! Pizza pie! Turn on the ovens! Mozzarella! And delicious! Take the dollars of them! Roll it out the toss in the air! Pizza pie! Make the pizza pie! Pizza pie! Felipe! Pizza pie! Pizza pie! Delicious! Pizza pie! Pizza pie! Pizza pie! Turn on the ovens! Salvano cheese, Salvano greasy shit, crazy meat, weird sauce. The sauce has these big chunks of tomato that are very well seasoned that are really good. Turn on the ovens and burn all the pizzas. Mamma mia! Make the pizza pie! Pizza pie! Felipe! Pizza pie! Turn on the ovens! Mozzarella! And delicious! Take the dough of them! Roll it out the toss in the air! Pizza pie, make it a pizza pie. Greasy shit. Pizza pie, Felipe. Pizza pie, weird sauce. Pizza pie, delicious. Pizza pie, pizza pie, pizza pie. Mamma mia, make it a pizza pie. Pizza pie, Felipe. Pizza pie. Turn on the ovens. Mozzarella and delicious. Take the dough of them. Roll it out the Pizza pie, make it a pizza pie. Greasy shit. Pizza pie, Felipe. Pizza pie, cheese. Pizza pie, delicious. Pizza pie, weird sauce. Pizza pie, crazy meat. Pizza pie, turn on the oven. Now on to the more exotic seasonings. These seasonings are catered more towards Italians. If you're not Italian, you don't like these kind of seasonings, you don't have to use them. But I'm Italian and I love it. Hey guys, it's Derek Shear, and I wanted to apologize to Reese Robbins. I'm extremely sorry, and I wanted to, wanted to tell Reese that she will always be one of my many favorite porn stars to watch. I'm at the blow. The chap is here. The chap is cool. Let me repeat that again. The chap is here. The chap is cool. And are you looking for things to suck? Cumin. Boy, oy, 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 oy. Cumin. Hardcore. Cumin. And now I'm gonna masturbate. Cumin. They fucked me again. Left and right. I'm the fuck out of these guys. Punching the guy's penis. And are you looking for things to suck? And my ass is so fucking stretched out at this point. Cumin. Never tip it, never drop a gifted sub. Yeah, never. I'm lurking and I'm jerking. Jerkin'. Yeah, I'm busting nuts. Bustin'. I've been stroking for so long. Stroking, stroking, stroking. Little Derek starts to hurt. I'm glad to hear that, Derek. The chap is here. The chap is cool. Let me repeat that again. The chap is here. The chap is cool. And now you're looking for things to suck. Cumin. Boy, oy, 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 oy. Cumin. Hardcore. Cumin. And now I'm gonna masturbate. Cumin. Derek, what's going on? I said, I love Cumin. Glad to hear that, Derek. My name's Derek Spike. Welfare check is early this month Looking to chill, interact and have fun Open up my YouTube page And I see your melting face And when I hear you burn I'm the only dent on earth This is so meaningful to me Your hurting back, your greasy hair, your patchy goatee, 
This is Phil, Phil Burnett, all right? And um, just wanted to tell you that I love the podcast. That being said, big ups. That being said, which vest is podcast vest? That being said, relaxing, chill, interactive, fun. That being said, which vest is podcast vest? That being said, relaxing, Chill, interactive, fun. A L Team Insight, the legend. Fantastic, Mr. Sam. The dentist. Sneak to the dead. Psychological style. Host. Get well soon, man. Me or cat. Artistic style. Host. Tap being set. Vest is podcast best. Tap being said. Which vest is podcast best? If there was ever meaningful content, it's being produced right here on that being said. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here now. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, we're still talking. We're, uh -huh. we're doing the show, and yes. it's live right now. Keep and talking. I forgot that I changed oh, the okay. room. Hold on. Uh, we're fine. Dude's not here. Yep, um, he's coming at four. And, as you and he's going to come at four, from what I've been okay, told. Okay, they, can, they uh, can hear me now. We're good, we're good, we're good. Hey, what's up, everybody? Okay. Nothing happened. <laughs> no D-word, that's for sure, because if I see D-word, you know what happens? Get that ass out of here! That's a promise! The promise, motherfuckers, because now I'm on the prowl. <laughs> Thin ice, everybody. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. All right, what's up? Atlas in the house. Brand dude in the house. So we got a hype show. So you better, better be ready for this one, my friends. So needless to say, we have business style announcements that I have to take care of because Meerkat's on his magical vacation. You know where he went, Atlas? Did you hear about this? Uh, Turkey, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? Turkish style. Not just a Thanksgiving food. 
Bet you figure that one out. I don't know where it is on a map, but Turkey sounds pretty hype. So he'll be back on Sunday, though, hopefully. So we should be ready to rock on Sunday with Meerkat. But one week, one week from today, the three-hour special, the ka 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 ching of the ring coming at you seven days from today, three-hour special. It's going to be hype, my friends. I cannot wait for that. So stay tuned for that. There will be no that group thing next week. It's going to be all the ching of the ring all of the time. With the former Kaching of the Ring, 2023 winner, Lemtex in the house. And I promise you, Sam's going to be there. And I promise you, America's going to be there. It's going to be hype. I cannot wait for that. Uh, so, business style announcements out of the fucking way. Atlas, I do have to ask you. We got a special contribution with a question. I'm going to throw this one to you because that's why I got you here. So, Atlas, please. Someone had a, a comment for you. And I can okay. pick it up here. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, did you see Phil defending a certain PDF file, my friend? I, I did. Uh, my mm. video came out uh, today on that. Uh, mm. My stance is yes, not please. that he was that not that he was defending a PDF file, but that he's stupid, doesn't mm -hmm. know how the English language works, and has to fence it everything at all times. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. That was from uh, the question was from defeated Samuel B. It says if Phil was saying EDP four 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 five was framed, imagine what he's going to say when Derek gets caught one day. Is he going to say Derek yes. was framed? I think it's just safe. Here's a big streamer. Uh, I don't know if you wanted some streamer tips, but don't defend pedophiles in any way. And you'll probably be better off. You know what I mean? It's just a nice, safe it's rule. It's the easiest slam dunk in the world. <laughs> All you got to do is condemn PDF files, and he couldn't even manage. It's, it's it's amazing. It's pretty easy to do. You know, that's the stance I stick with. So, you know, it works out for me so far. Big ups, Aid Robertson in the house. Big ups, TBS Disaster Stream. Thin Ice for Aid Robertson. I've got you on the list. And Movie Side, big ups for the, get, the membership bombs, my friend. And Hype for Atlas, the bookkeeper, brand new for making it the podcast O Sphere. Big ups. And uh, yeah, Brand Dude and Atlas have both been on the show before. Uh, but uh, we got some big news to get to. Brand Dude will be joining us at around 4 o'clock, so uh, it's about 15 minutes. We'll see, though. Uh, I do have to bring up to our special board here. And uh, have you seen this picture, Atlas, my friend? <laughs> I, I was sent this today. Okay. And uh, so I don't know what we're all where you guys are out on out at on this story. So uh, first up, this is breaking news here. So someone posted this story on Twitter, I believe yesterday, and it was look at DSP uh, DSP short. And you'll see how the pig really looks. His iPhone camera shows what he's trying to hide. Here's a screenshot of just one of them. So I questioned. I don't know about you, uh, Atlas, but when I first saw this, I said, is this real? Did you think it was real right away, Atlas? What was your stance when you first saw it? Uh, when I got sent it, I was like, yeah, that's that's DSP in it. Like, he's yeah. oh, he's always that ugly. I'm never that close to him. So, like, maybe he is really looking like that. I yes. don't know. I thought it was real. I thought it was Photoshop. I thought it was myself. But then I saw the proof, and I'm going to show you the proof right the fuck now, because why not, right? So here is... The stream that it comes from. I want to give you all the context here because we don't take anything out of context. Uh, let's watch this beautiful short from October 23rd where this picture was from. Okay, let's fucking go. Come on. What's up, everyone? Phil here with the short schedule. <laughs> and since we've been playing Gotham Knights for a couple of days now. I just so there is definite creasage, right? I see the creasage. Yes. That, the, the creasage was throwing me off, but there it is. Okay. Uh oh, come on, here we go. On Sunday, we're gonna mix it up and we're mix gonna swing back be a mix over up. to the other new release that I've been playing for the past. So anyway, week. you don't need who gives a shit what he's scared. I don't give a shit about schedule. But then <laughs> DSP Racist comes in, the Twitter account. That's not that's the name of the Twitter account. It wasn't a statement from me. And uh, drops this. Just, oh yeah, just a little less than two hours ago. And says it was photoshopped. But I don't think it was still. <laughs> I think it was just the angle. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, because that hairline. It, uh, hmm. hmm. It's really. It's really yeah, like it's the most subtle Photoshop. I was going to say, if you're, if you're going to go out of your way to Photoshop the guy, you'd think you'd make it, you know, a little more egregious. But whatever, yeah. if they've done anything, it's it's very it's very slight. I think I think it's the same picture too, Wilson. I I agree. So anyway, the funniest part of this. The funniest part of this whole fucking thing was then I, I, I was I was questioning if it was real and as some of us were and some of us thought it were when it was or whatever. So then I I uh, I, I see this and Philip <laughs> Philip 
couldn't resist responding to this and says, there are tons of legit ugly pictures of me. You don't have to use a photoshopped one. Dingus. Shout out Dingus. I thought that was hilarious because it it seems to be him, <laughs> right? So now we're in a real fucking pickle. I think it's 100% real, and Phil just couldn't tell that's what he looked like. But if that's photoshopping, that's the most subtle photo job in the world. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, like I said, if you're going to go out of your way to detract on the guy with uh, Photoshop edit, like I would imagine you'd take it a little further than that, Most which I do. saw afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, somebody, yeah, there were some funny ones after that. But yeah, I, I mean, so there you go. There's a, I think it's definitely just a, a different angle that made this happen. I mean, that looks very authentic once you see the true shot here. I mean, look at that. That's, that's the, I'm in the short now, by the way. This is live video. So here, continuation of see, a like if you get the right angle, Requiem at 10 and I just think Phil didn't realize the damage that the iPhone does. When I say damage, I mean the spotlight it puts on you for its high definition, <laughs> you know? High definition is not always your friend, you know? When you are... Yeah, for sure. When you look like that. When you're addicted to gin <laughs> and pulling, it's not the best idea, you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyways... <laughs> Real quick, before Brand Dude gets here, I do want to give you one more fun little uh, excursion, let's say. So today on this... Sh- yeah, oh, get out of here, Brand Dude. Come get on. Get out of here, Brand Dude. <laughs> asshole, right? On WPIG, <laughs> I, we're doing the DSP is the PC Builder episode, which we went through all the nonsense. I actually talked to Furtado on the stream, Chris Furtado, impromptu and planned. Uh, he joined the stream. But uh, after that, we got a fun story. Now, I'm going to show, pr- play you the same story three times. And I want you to listen along, and let's hear how the story changes over the years, okay? So we have a June 20th, 2017, all right? So let's enjoy this story together positively, and then we'll move on throughout the years and see how it changes. Really short story here. Come on. Plugged into a surge protector. Okay. There was an electrical storm while you and okay. go in the other, and we'd basically join games together and kind of okay. do, do I had, I, stuff. I, I, had, pretty I had a LAN party, whatever. Um, okay, here we go. And then all that ended one time when I went to a Street Fighter tournament, uh-huh. okay? And I came back from the tournament, and my parents said, well, we got bad news. There was an electrical storm while you were gone, and all our power went out. And I said, wait a minute, are you serious? <laughs> all right, so the pow- all our power went out. That was the fact that was shared by Linda. Can we agree on that? Atlas, you with me uh, still? That's that, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, okay. nope, that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Uh, I just want to point out real quick, the alien speak that is electrical storm. Never was, in my <laughs> life <laughs> has anybody ever called it that. It was an electrical style storm, yes. And I checked, and one of the PCs completely fried, despite the fact Okay, that- how many PCs did you just hear, Atlas? Was it one or two? Let's hear the, just to, just to be, one way to do it. the context. Here we go. Wait a minute, are you serious? And I checked, and one of the PCs completely mm. fried, despite the fact that it was plugged into a surge protector. Okay. And that so PC... one of the PCs one. fried. Okay, one of the PCs fried. Yeah. So we have lost one PC to the storm, okay? Big Ups Regis Philogen says, won't be able to stick around, but wanted to send some Big Ups. Big Ups to you, my friend. Let's Probably fucking cost me about, I don't know, $2,000. $2,000. I, said, I don't think I'm ever building PCs ever again. All right, and so I... that's, that's the end of the story. Electrical style storm came in, killed one of the PCs, $2,000 down the drain. Now we're going to go to February 5th, 2023. Same story. Let's fucking go. Come on. It was neat. And then I went to a Street Fighter tournament, and I came back, and my parents said, so we got bad news. Uh Uh-oh. I said, what's the bad news? They said there was a lightning storm when you were gone. Now it's it's lightning, not electrical. It's a lightning Lightning now, not just electrical. It's now a lightning. So, okay, I've heard that. slightly uh, Slightly more human hit the telephone pole right out there at the corner and fried everyone's stuff i said what Did okay you- so the the as you as i uh, just to follow along i'll be the narrator here instead of the power went out now we have the electrical storm hit the telephone pole over there and fried everyone's electrical stuff we're still on board right <laughs> ah, that, okay. that tracks i've had that happen fried, fried everyone's stuff I said, what? They said, yeah, the power went out for about a day. Uh-huh. And when it came back on, a lot of some people's stuff were broken. Our mm-hmm. printer's broken. Okay, so now oh. we got a broken printer. Br- br- shout out to the broken printer. I went and looked. Both of my fucking PCs were fried. Uh, both. And uh, they were plugging the Both. Uh, hmm. Both of them. Huh? What? How many was it? I'm not really sure here. Completely fried. This, I said, wait a minute. Are you serious? Uh-huh. Are you serious? And I checked, and one of the PCs completely fried. Uh, oh. 
Okay. That's the version of the story I always remembered mm. was that it was one. Now we're mm. now we're saying both. Both. Now it's both. Actors two. Uh huh. Didn't matter. Wh and after I that, do? I said, you know what? <laughs> Fuck that. And by the way, my consoles were fine. <laughs> Just the PCs. Consoles were fine. This is the superior this, platform, yes, obviously. He, he's turned off on PC. So no, we're not done. Let's hear the story one more time. Out. So I leave uh -huh. and I come back and my parents say, so we don't want you to freak out. But we had a power uh, a power storm, like or excuse me, a lightning storm. Oh, what? we almost got power storm. <laughs> power storm. <laughs> Watch out for the power storm. <laughs> I don't want you to freak out. But we had a power uh, a power storm, like or excuse me, a lightning storm oh, while you were me. gone. Okay. Now normally this wouldn't be a big deal, except the lightning bolt came down and hit the power line down the street. We could see it. The whole thing was on fire. So the fire. Woo! All Jesus. Sudden, now we've got fire. <laughs> now fire has entered the chat. Fire department had to come and they had to release it. We didn't have power for it. Fire department had to come and had to release it. I don't know what release means. That's not. Like yeah, I was gonna thing. ask. What did they? What did they do? They released? Released what? The fire? I like release the <laughs> <roar>. <laughs> This is a hype firestorm, dude. Deal. Except. The lightning bolt came down and hit uh -huh. the power line down the street. We could see it. Awesome, the whole dude. thing was on fire. Holy shit, so dude. the fire department had to come and they had to release it. We didn't have power for a day. Holy shit. And we don't know what happened in the house. Now, the thing is, I had had... Oh, and that, now we don't know what happened in the house. I was... I, well, Jesus Christ, this story sucks. Yeah. We were flip-flopping all over the place. <laughs> yeah, previously, in the same year, by the way, this is both told in 2023, this version. First time he said everyone around the house was losing their shit. We lost a printer. Now there's the printers a fire. are gone. Yeah, that was now the fire? printers they don't even know. We don't know about the printer though. We don't know yet. All my equipment plugged in the surge protector. Okay, cool. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So you I started turning kidding. everything on. One of my PCs had completely fried. We're back it to one. But, now we're back mm. to one. So we went from one, two to one, but we added fire. That's the pretty hype addition though. I like the version of the story the best. It's like a retelling. It's like a, it's say like director's cut, you know, you can take things. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like this telling. Hold on. It's wouldn't turn on. The components didn't work. Somehow it had received an actual shock. Oh, actual shock. Lines. And mm -hmm. this PC, luckily this was my lower end gaming PC. Oh. One was like probably like a $2,000 rig. And I would say this one was probably around a thousand dollars maybe. Ah, so we have a little change to the plot. Remember the first time the $2,000 PC was the one, the one that got busted. Then they both got busted, and now the lesser one got busted. So we kind of changing the story a little bit. What do you think of this version of the story so far, though? I, I'm I'm hating this version the most okay. because there's a lot of what I deem as filler. Like you saying, like, uh, oh, it doesn't work. The the PC is completely fried. None of the like the components don't work. Uh -huh. But I'm curious now because he mentioned it. Which ones? Like all of them just yeah. don't work anymore. Or but also, what's the 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 console arc? Do we get any console updates? Let's see. PC one was like probably like a two thousand dollar rig, and I would say this one was probably around a thousand dollars, maybe. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing. Now, wow. <clears throat> well, that's just great. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even kidding. That was about the time that uh, I actually stopped ah, no update. building PCs. That was around, <laughs> man, I would probably say. So there wow. we go. The odyssey of the the power out, excuse me, electrical storm. Uh, first, it took out one PC and took out $2,000 PC. The second telling was it took out both PCs, but the consoles were fine. And third telling, it took out one PC, which was a $1,000 PC. And there, was, and there was a fire involved. So there we go. Very big, robust storytelling by DSP there. Thanks so much, DSP, for your robust storytelling. <laughs> I, I can't believe he let... I can't <laughs> believe he let that put him off PCs, like, indefinitely. Uh -huh. Like, this one, this one experience. I mean, I know he had a bunch of other experiences, mm -hmm. but, like, this one thing was where he drew the line. Because I've had that happen to me. Yeah. And I just replaced the components that didn't work anymore. And yes. I moved on with my day and continued to use my PC. So yes. I don't know how he let that stop him. And also, you yeah, like, he, of course, for him, everything was broken. Okay. All the components. Unsalvageable. Nothing You know worked. what he did? He tried to turn it on, didn't click on, threw it in the trash. That's what the real happened. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> there's no 100%. component check. There's no components being checked. It is can't turn on, throw it out. <laughs> but anyways, we got some messages to get to. Let's get to them. Big ups to everybody. If you still want to send your messages in, you know where to do it. Link is down below. Let's get to our first one from Oh Mama. I gotta do it. We're getting ready for the Kaching of the Ring. Many people are calling. 
This is the early favorite. Dark Side Drill is in the house. Let's go. Dark Side Drill. Hey, Big O's boys. Appreciate you taking my call. So I have a question um, because I actually have a little bit of a story that leads into right. a question. But, cool, cool. Um, so basically right. the other day I was talking to my homie. We were chopping it up and we, we got excited about something. I can't remember what it was. And I had this instant thought to just like hit him with the wide pose. <laughs> so mid sentence, I'm just I just hit him with the wide pose and just kept talking about what we were talking about. As you do, of course, you know how who doesn't you got do that? to sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And bro, he looked at me like I was an alien from another planet. Like yeah, I could tell instantly, he was kind of just like, "Whoa, what is this? What what is this guy doing, bro?" So it got me thinking, like hit the stuff the that wide. DSP does, the mannerisms. You know, when he snorts, he does the little turtle head poking out of the shell and puts his hands up and. <laughs> You know, the smacking with the sips and chewing water and shit. Like, what is something about DSP? The one like one thing that you find super like morbidly fascinating. Because mm. honestly, the Y pose has is, is gotta be one for me. Like he'll get super excited and just go straight into the Y pose like he's talking. I have never seen anybody mm. in my life do some shit like that. Like that is just absolute alien reptilian lizard shit in a human suit type shit. You know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> what what's the one thing about DSP that you just find so morbidly fascinating and it's just like who else does this? You know what I mean? All uh, right. Yeah, that's my question. Big us boys, appreciate y'all. I like to hit him with the why. That's like. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta hit him with the why. Uh -huh. When you're losing an argument or something, you just hit him with the why. You know, that's it happens. <laughs> All right, Atlas, I'll let you get this one first. What's uh what a weird weird Phil's weird mannerisms that you're morbidly fascinated by? Go ahead. Uh, one of them that's been really uh, with me recently because I started doing it ironically, which means it's going to turn into unironically doing mm -hmm. it, is uh, the goat laugh. The ah. goat laugh is one of my favorites recently. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand it. You don't have something to say. You just go into the, into the microphone. It's yeah, contagious. what do you do? I think Panda was the first carrier of this, and then she passed it on, and now we're all catching it. So it's really dangerous. Be, stay careful out there, guys. But he does... Kind of hits him with the thing, you know. So be careful, be careful. Um, for me, I would say the uh, it does does this count? But I would say the unabashed digging and self pruning. You know, like he hmm. will just not give a fuck and go two two knucks deep in the ear. You know, we've seen it when we do streaming together, Atlas. He'll go. You know, he'll go too deep. Like you know, okay, you might go here, right? Ah, oh, my ear's itchy. You do the tip. He'll go to the second knock sometimes, and he'll be digging. He gets in there. Yeah, like I think that's one of my favorites. Um, the uh, decision making process. A lot of people are saying it. <laughs> I like that. But eating the fingers. Well, I mean, I bite my fingernails too. That's something I do need to stop. I, I, I was gonna say. I also the like the fingernails and the the itching and picking for mm -hmm. me isn't nearly as big a deal as it is for some people because I have like dry skin. Yes. I have psoriasis okay. on my scalp, so like I itch and pick a lot when I'm not supposed to because uh, I have a skin condition. Yes. But did your aunt yeah, give no, you the that, knuck deep did, in your ear is. Uh, did your aunt tell you about that, or did you, she just uh, die no. before she could tell you about it? Unfortunately, no, it's my grandfather's fault. God damn it! All right, hopefully, did yeah. he tell you about to give you a warning or something? Hopefully, uh, thankfully, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Whew, thank God, thank God. I didn't have to go my whole life without knowing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just the and also the okay. I don't know about you guys, but. When I pick my ear, let's say it's itchy, you know, you get a little itch. I don't check it. I don't want to see it. I, I'm getting a tissue, wiping it away. I don't do the look. And Phil has to do the look. The harvesting checks, you know? <laughs> it's all over. I, we, you know, we've seen the red. He'll go into the red, you know? And then he'll like. Oh, yeah. He gets in there. That's, I don't like to check. Oh, Carl, you check it. All right. Maybe some people check. <laughs> but hey, yeah, maybe you could check it in private. We all do things in private. We don't do it on camera. Well, Phil does those things too. So, camera was on all the whole time. All right, next all up, time. Frozen Flame. Let's go. Get in here. Come on. Hey, that being said, big ups. Frozen Flame here again. One of my biggest frustrations with Phil is how he has no respect for the creative process. He will see something like food and movie reviews or covering gaming news and. He just sees it as someone talking about a thing, and he doesn't see anything else that goes into that. It 
explains why his reviews of movies are just him talking about the plot Mm -hmm. because he doesn't understand any of the other elements that would go into reviewing a movie. Uh, Same goes with games. Uh, Even his food reviews boil down to just saying, it's yummy and going, (laughs) mmm, obnoxiously like, ugh. Robust. (laughs) Dang. Now, it's okay to not know how to review stuff. That's fine. But Phil's problem is he tries to pretend like he's on par with people that actually do that for a living and are successful yeah. or he'll pretend he's somehow better than those people you know the usual those are shills whatever mm-hmm. and it's that smug arrogance that really gets to me like so do you think he actually doesn't understand what goes into doing any content or is he really just kind of ignoring that and just wants to do as little work as possible um, or maybe it's a little bit of both that's personally what i think I uh, love the content and uh, wishing Steve of the Dead a good recovery. Big ups, dude. And okay, I'll take this one first. I think it's because he only engages with that on the surface level. So he'll tune into Review Bra, who says, you know, Review Bra puts infinitely more work into his stuff, but he might turn to the middle and see Review Bra, like fast forward, let me get to when he eats it. Okay, whatever. All right, let me see. Okay. He goes to the pizza and then he takes a bite of the pizza. Okay, I'm liking this. And he'll be like, okay, that's all I have to do. But he doesn't see all the other stuff that the work that Review Bra puts into it to make it really unique and meaningful, truly meaningful, because that dude takes it fucking seriously. And he really tells you all you need to know. But Philip never sees that stuff. He thinks this is all you got to do. Just like with his React, I think he really saw Sniper Wolf. Whoa, she gets a million views, dude. He just says like, what? Huh? (laughs) That's all she does. I can do that, too. So she doesn't see, well, Sniper was a bad idea because she really doesn't do any work. That was a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, she, she really doesn't do anything. <laughs> that was a bad example. Oops. <laughs> you know, some people react channels do more, add more to it. And like, he didn't see that part. He said, okay, react. I can do that. Boom. But what's your take on that, Atlas? I, I, I think it's a combination of, of that wanting to be lazy and not understanding the content, but also him having such a high opinion of himself that he thinks like, even if his content isn't on that level, even if he isn't able to say all of the things that he needs to say, like a real reviewer would do because he doesn't have the, the vocabulary for it or the understanding mm-hmm. that his opinion is enough to bring the people in and that it's going to be good content just because he's there being himself, which is just <laughs> not the case. <laughs> yeah. I got everyone saying he can't, he doesn't know what takes in to, goes into content because when he started, he literally did the minimum possible and it worked out. So now, Hey, why do I ever, why can't I just do the minimum possible? And he thinks he's doing a lot of work, by the way. He'll tell you every day. He's, he's in the busiest day of his life right now on his off day, guys. You didn't know that? Oh, so busy. Shopping. Hello? Groceries? You ever heard of them? Pet store supplies? Pet supplies? Hello? I'm busy. Okay? So I've never heard anybody <laughs> talking about needing to relax more than DSP, a guy who spent 15 years sitting on his ass playing games. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, doesn't know what a stressful day actually looks like. Oh, I didn't get to relax with my wife. Oh, oh, oh sometimes it's like that, dog. Welcome yeah. to the club. You got to work. I don't, uh-huh. I don't know what to tell you. I, I mean, it'd be cool if you didn't have to, but sometimes you got to. You know what I'm saying? But big ups to uh, Boat Knight says, how long until DSP complete head shave? Ooh, ooh! I don't know if he'll ever do that. I think he might do I, the the top is bald, but the back circle. You know, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> just giving options. <laughs> I, I just hope we get the infinite hat arc. Yes, that's that's. I I think that's what all respectably balding men do. Uh, yeah, they obviously. do the infinite hat arc. Uh. <laughs> but uh, hey, just want to let it be known before anyone starts saying shit. The first WPIG stream, I did not wear a hat. So now you can't say I always wear hats because I did that on purpose. I was strategic, bitches. Strategic. <laughs> uh, big ups to Danny in the house. Says, fellas, I find it so annoying when he claims he doesn't know things, but he'll give so much information that proves he knows. Why lie? Well, the reason for that is he has to appear that he's above that kind of stuff, normie stuff. Oh, you pay attention to that news? I, I don't really know anything about that. I don't have time. But then let me tell you all the things I learned in the trending tab on twitter so that's my well, that was that. that was exactly his problem with the edp thing is he listed all of these things that he wanted to go into detail about it and then tell you that he doesn't know anything about it he didn't do any self-research this is what other people were mm-hmm. saying so if it sounded like he was defending edp that's just what other people were saying right yes. that like, like that was the strategy and that's why he it looks as bad as he did in that circumstance because he doesn't 
actually know how to do anything. Yeah, he doesn't have any of the, like, the, uh, let's say, support knowledge to actually, if you want to defend him, you, that would take some knowledge of the situation, but he doesn't have any of that. So it's just, like, all this hollow, like, he's taking out a gun, Dex. I mean, uh, okay, like, come on, man. This is not what you want to say. <laughs> this is not the place for this, dude. <laughs> Luigi's Nair in the house says, even God is a detractor. Ah, yes. God was the one that ruined his PC building career. You are correct about that. That was, or Zeus himself. Who was it? Who knows? Uh, Lord Kane in the house says, Thunder style storm. Yes, my favorite kind of storm. And Wesley H in the house says, Phil's Yonkers ain't as big as Sniper Wolf. Mm, that's true. Very true. That's the yeah, that's what, point. But shout out Tifa's Yonkers instead. Those are far more important to me. Much more robust. Uh, Atlas, who's your guess on who Philip will date in the Golden Saucer? Uh, you you might not be a Final Fantasy VII player. I believe you said that. but I am not. You get to date one of the party members at this one special place. It's like a theme park. Who will yes. Phil date? Your choices. The aforementioned bussy, lovely Tifa. The, the let's say, more the... Peace, the, the peaceful, beautiful, serene Aerith, the other girl. You have Barrett, the large, urban style, stationary style. Huge, very robust, looks like a wrestler. And can, you can choose Yuffie as well, but she's 16. Ah, uh, okay. Do we have to? Like, this is a mandatory section. We have to date. You have to date. Yes, you do have to uh, date. You cannot avoid the date. I think I think we're gonna uh man, that's uh Who will he choose here? I think we're gonna go I'm gonna go with Barrett. I'm gonna go with Barrett because I think he might try and play it off as like just two dudes hanging out. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking too. He'll think that's the funniest because like, oh I can be funny with this, but really it's the lamest choice. And also oh yeah, yeah you can you can also do the dog, Red Thirteen, who is a talking humanoid style dog. It's a long story, but yeah. You could do that as well. I think that's hard, though, isn't it? Anyways, not important. Uh, big ups Tony T, who says, I'm fascinated with his decision-making process. Yes. Whatever's the easiest. That's usually how you figure that one out. So whichever mm -hmm. one is the easiest, that is the path he will take. It's called Occam's Razor. Or no. <laughs> what was... I forget what Occam's Razor was, actually. It was like... <laughs> I got fucked. There was so... I, hey, Steve, help me out with what Occam's Razor is. We, come, we came up with a good name for... With a good definition of that. Speaking of Occam's Razor, not Occam's Razor, Brand Dude, Hello! Hello, it's me, Ackham's Razor. Yes, Brand is in the house. <laughs> you are now joining us. So get rid of this. How you feeling, my friend? Can we get your take, please? It's a very important debate. A lot of people are asking. Who a lot of people. will Philip date in Final Fantasy VII at the Golden Saucer? Uh, I'm going to say Aerith. I'm okay. just going to say Aerith, because if he goes with Barrett, I think he's afraid people will make fun of him. Uh, that's, that's, like, that's it's that's too obvious, I think, that... You know, I don't think he's going to pick uh, Barrett. But he's not going to pick Tifa for obvious reasons. I'm picking so I'm, Tifa. No, yeah. no, no, she's out. Sadly, yeah, yeah, yeah. boys. It's not <laughs> so happening. I'm, I'm, Forget about I'm it. I'm thinking Aerith. All right. That's my guess. You heard it. You heard it here. And, Brandon, we need your take on this. Uh, let me get to the other screen here. Uh, is this Photoshopped or not? A lot of people are saying <laughs> it's Photoshopped. What's your take? Have you seen this picture? I think I yeah. saw. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think I saw that it is Photoshop just a little bit. But I don't even believe like, that's true. Because look, I really? think it's just a different angle, as you can see. The lips don't line up. You're right there. The lips in, in these two photos don't line up yeah. exactly right. See? Well, and the, the one crease on his on his right eye is a little a little further, a little deeper, right? It but... is deeper. <laughs> he looks so gray, though. Yeah, he's he, yeah. his skin's changed colors there. He looks a little more ghoulish. I yeah. think that could be ring light. Ring light's fault. But anyways, we're getting too... <laughs> sorry, sir. Most, we're getting way <laughs> too deep. <laughs> All right. Message time. Let's go. Come on. Get in here. Ink Ribbon Devourer. I love that name. Ink Ribbon Devourer in the house. Come on, Ink Ribbon. Get in here. Hey, guys. Uh, that being said, um, sorry if y'all heard my phone. Recently, I was uh, watching some clips of Phil, and I noticed, you know, he always says the words the same way every time mm -hmm. we all have. But also, it seems to be a way for him to even, like, say anything or get anything out. And between that and the way his mouth kind of droops on the right side, I got to ask, did Phil have a stroke? 
is he overcompensating for a stutter? Because I'm autistic, and I don't make sure to pronunciate each T in Twitter. Kind of weird. Anyway, big ups, y'all. Keep up the great work. Mm. Peace out. Health side style question. Is the, oh, that's a new, I haven't heard of this theory. This is a theory, theory, theory that involves instead of to, to compensate for a stutter, you oversay your T's. Some have said it might be in homage to a fallen friend. Some people say that. But, Brandu, you're here, for, you're here now. What's your take on this? Come on, hit us with it. Your medical style, go ahead. Sure, yeah. Um, I, 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 go ahead, sorry. I, I just think it's, um, I think he just is overcompensating for like a mumble mouth situation, like maybe some gin brain speech kind of thing. Um, okay. I don't want to say it's anything, you know, like a stroke or anything, just because I, I mean, I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I just think he maybe was getting made fun of. Like, he, he started noticing that he was slurring his words together. Mm -hmm. So I think he just pronounces the T's in Twitter just to sound smarter also, I think, is a, another part of it. <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> so. Hit him with the T's. That'll make you sound smarter. <laughs> got it, got it, got yeah. it. Yeah, I, I think that too. I, I, Central Todd, that's what I say. It's a memory of, of a fallen friend. But Atlas, what's your take on this over-pronunciating of the T's? I think the over pronunciation of the T's is uh, more to make him sound smart because he thinks that that's how smart people talk. They really enunciate certain mm. certain parts of certain words. Um, but as far as the, the droopy face, like there's so many <laughs> clips where you could see he's having some sort of like eye twitching that he doesn't seem to really be aware of or certain parts of his face are moving in in very strange ways yes i wouldn't be surprised if the way that he's lived for the past 15 years is is taking a toll on him uh, obviously yeah. it is but like <laughs> there's just too many clips where his face is doing things that your face really shouldn't be doing uncontrollably and in some of these like uh like a dragon streams when he's like kind of falling asleep you see him start you get these weird little moves i can't do it but like cheek will tweet out for a second and may it like you think it's about the money because it's always low money you know so he's kind of like tweaking you know like i gotta get it but i don't know man something there um <laughs> it's something it's definitely something lr in the house says i think he has bell's palsy but but i'm not medical style enough to even know like is there like mild cases of that so like you can like be normal outside of a few tweaks here and there you know what i mean I don't know. Somebody yeah, I have no idea, and I'm and I'm not I'm not, I'm not a doctor style either, and I'm not anywhere close to that age. So I just figured it was a combination of age, alcohol, and lifestyle, where like some of his muscles are just starting to fire when they shouldn't be, Me and too. yeah, that has some has some repercussions. I'll let you know when I get that old. I mean, I don't know. It's got a long way for me, but um, yeah, me anyways. and you got a long time, yep. ALT. We got we got a while. I can't wait. I... All right, anyways, let's go to Where's the Sauce? Come on, Where's the Sauce? Hello. Put on your mic, Where's the Sauce? Hold on, I'm sorry. Where's the Sauce did not put on the mic? There it is. Hey, that being said, I just had a question, not really inspired by anything, but does anyone remember the last time that Phil made sauce? Because I remember, like, a few years ago, there'd, there'd be just those about this. streams where he would be like, oh, got to have a break every 40 minutes to stir the sauce. But I feel like that hasn't happened for a long time. So oh, no. I wonder if he, like, still makes it. Like, maybe Cat hates it so much and has just sort of told him, no, it's disgusting. I hate Bingo. it. And so that's kind of crushed <laughs> his spirit a bit. But that could be a segment, maybe, that, like, saves the business where... Instead of feasting with the king, it's like fancy feast with cat and Phil makes her sauce and she has to eat it. And who knows, maybe she'll love it as much as uh, Leanna loved those meatball subs. Oh. Thanks. All right, now you're making me find that clip of the eating. That's so painful. Right, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'll get it. When, she ha when Leanna is forced to eat it at one time. Eat it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Bingo. Bingo. Eat it. Fucking Your mailing idiot. address. Here. This is from um, Mighty D, of course. Legend Mighty D in the house. Let's get, I know it's in here. Here we go. Where is the clip? Oh, we got a cat clip. Where is the part where Leanna clip where she... Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll look. find it. Don't worry. And let's get the next message. I'll find it again. Fail. Fail, 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 fail. Let's get to Zach Bird. Speaking of Kaching of the Ring. 
Zachary Burgett is the writer of both Cat Song, the most underappreciated song from last year, and Gowdy Road, the legendary song in my intro video, and and Atlas the Bookkeeper's intro. <laughs> most importantly, he's got a message for us today, getting us ready one week from today. Come on, Zach, hit us with it. What's up, y'all? So I kind of realized something today. Uh, a while back, one of the people that called in brought up an interesting question, which is, if you could go back and change one part of Phil's past, what kind of ripple effect could it have, and what would you change? I was thinking today about Phil's personality disorders, and I realized that we all sort of recognize that Phil acted the way he did because he thought he was a pro wrestling heel. Mm -hmm. But it never really clicked with me exactly how deep that sort of notion went to the degree that if you took Phil away from ever watching pro wrestling, <laughs> he could have been a completely different person. <laughs> like I firmly believe he wouldn't be quite the dickhead he is today. If he didn't think it was so cool to be that guy. Mm. What do you think Phil's personality would be like today? If you took him away from pro wrestling when he was young. Ooh, all right. Atlas, you hit us with this first. I'm still thinking. Uh, I think that he would be a uh, more shy, uh, coward, timid style individual. Uh, I think he used the pro wrestling heel thing as a as a crutch and continues to use it as a crutch when he's feeling sort of insecure, when he feels like he has to defend himself. He kind of leans more into that mm -hmm. and and leans into being an asshole so that he can say at the end of the day, like, Oh, I was doing this. If it goes uh, poorly for him, because obviously he doesn't want to be held accountable, but if he mm -hmm. couldn't lean into that, I think he would just not say nearly as much as he does. I don't think he would have done most of the things that he did throughout the years. Cause he's a coward at his heart. Yeah. He's, I mean, he only talks big on the internet, so that's, that's for fucking sure. No matter what, but would it have taken away some of that bite that he has or had you know, but Brandy, what's your take on this? I think he would have been an asshole anyways. I just think that's the kind of person he is. And he likes to blame the FGC and Street Fighter for mm -hmm. why he behaves the way he does. So I also think that plays a part too. Just like the shit talking and I don't know, just like the feuds that would happen. And I guess also wrestling is why he acted that way. But I don't know. I still think he would have been very similar because of street fighter so that's another thing you could look at that maybe if he didn't have that you know yeah. he could have turned out differently well i think you know in my extensive research style stuff the one link of all of it is phil trying to find acceptance right that's the whole all of this is trying to find acceptance and i think that's why he loves money so much it's not about greed per se it's about feeling accepted right and that's how he links money and acceptance so when he got when he found street fighter though you kind of have friends automatically, and I wouldn't, don't say friends, but you have people that will tolerate you, let's say, because we're doing this joint activity together, you know? And I they think, need a match. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, like we can, I need, I need practice, so like I'll play with you. And I think that's really, really, like more than wrestling, I think it's the Street Fighter. Like if we could say, if he never found Street Fighter, I wonder where he would have found his let's say, mandatory acceptance, you know what I mean? Because, Sikorsky. like, I mean, Sikorsky never found it. <laughs> so, like, I wonder where he would have found it at. Because he probably would have found some community that would have, you know, welcomed him in, you know, or like, because they have no choice, kind of. Like, I don't know, bird watching or something. I don't know. Something. You know, like, How oh, much... you, you know, you're a bird watcher. Cool, you can join us. You know, I don't know. But what are we going to say, Atlas? Uh, so much of his actions that he took when he was in Street Fighter, though, were like they were so wrestling inspired. I mean, he went by yeah. DXP for how long? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe he would have been a different person in the FGC on the SRK forums had he not found this wrestling. Maybe he could have been, uh, you know, a more quiet, timid style and people wouldn't have hated on him so much. And he could have done something with the FGC instead. I'm not saying that that would have happened because he's not very good at the games in all honesty, but mm -hmm. you know, somebody could have liked him maybe. <laughs> yeah. Just to that, I would say though, especially back then, like the shit talking and like the, the kind of way they would talk to each other and kind of 
you know, interact. Mm. I, I still think he some of that would have still happened just because that's what other people were doing. And, you know, to side with ALT, it's like he was trying to fit in. So he would also be doing that and think that's what you're that's how people are supposed to interact. You know? Yeah. Like he, he thought like. As usual, he can't do anything that normal people can do, so he does it the DSP way, which is always the wrong way. And even like trash talking was like that, you know. And yeah. just it just led to a, to a path where like it's me versus the world. Even though the me versus the world started like I don't know what grade you want to say, but it was very early. I could I tell you at least high school, because remember I was in the group of kids that didn't have a group. You know, so you know what that means, you know, <laughs> like we were kind of like not nerds, but not cool. But we were kind of like, you know, you know, you read between the lines there. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, that's a good question. That's a good thought. Uh, I do have to play this because, you know, you brought it up. One minute, 12 seconds. Let's enjoy. <laughs> what do you think Leanna's thinking during this one, my friends? This is a meatball sub. Looks delicious, right? Oh, let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we <laughs> finally have a result. Something that I have cooked, ladies oh, and gentlemen. She old enough right. for that? And the result of my long <laughs> day of so. over a pot of sauce and meat, we have homemade <laughs> meatball subs, which Leanna is about to dig into. Now, the, the meatballs themselves, unfortunately. Like, let me tell you, dude. Like, that's not something I want anyone fucking filming me eating, you know? Like, you can't oh, look no. cool with that, you know? <laughs> Come on. Give her we a got break. a little bit singed on the outside, but when we actually put them in here, the, the meat looks Oh, Phil, double fisting. Hell yeah. We cooked. So, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. He's a ball gobbler. What can he say? Ball subs. What do you think? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That's the moment. <laughs> she would leave uh, three years after this. There you go. Here we go. It is the most sexual meatball sub I've ever had. Really? Really? Well, sexual. I've never had one before. But never had a sexual? What's that? Meatball sub? What does that wow. mean? Wow. <laughs> Hello, I'm not Italian. I guess that's true. <laughs> uh, only Italians can eat meatball subs, obviously. <laughs> Hello, not Italian. Low key, Panda was racist. I mean, that's just legit. More than oh Phil, yeah, think, you know? oh yeah, low key, uh, yeah, high key, in a very high <laughs> yeah. register. Oh, sub, <laughs> wow. Hello, not Italian. I guess Hello. that's true. So yeah, well, we oh, got the Sobe water. The uh -huh. and put it right onto the Wait, year is this? Sobe, brother, 2014. Put a little bit more sauce. You sprinkle. Oh, that makes more cheese, sense. And I actually give it a sprinkling of Italian seasonings on top, as you Ooh. can see. Two homemade. Meatball subs for dinner. Leanna's having one. If she's hungry enough, she'll have a second. We'll have to see. So is it good? You like it? Mm -hmm. Great. And that's that Jeez. is the so of four and a half hours of hard labor, but it's four and a half hours of hard labor. Hard labor. Like he was like mining like he was out, you know, harvesting <laughs> the tomatoes himself and he was mashing on them and like <laughs> what are you kill, talking about? Kill four pigs, put them in there. <laughs> crazy dude this guy looks a lot of work in all right let's go <laughs> next message in the house is that clay kid come on all right all right you stupid detractors i am here to set the record straight uh oh and phil is the goat of fighting games okay yeah he has never legitimately lost not once are you okay? serious all of his losses <laughs> or his quote unquote losses fall into three <laughs> basic categories mm -hmm. number one the opponent is just spamming. Okay, what Correct. is he supposed to do about that? They're they're just spamming the same overpowered Nothing. move. It's yep. cheating. That's not the point. I don't think that's Find cheating. Find the lie. You, you've just never played a fighting game. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good point. Uh, number two, the opponent does something unpredictable that he isn't ready for. Huh? What? That's not <laughs> fair. That's cheating. <laughs> it is not fair that they can do that and he can't. Number three is uh the big one. Just a simple fact that he's playing online. We're all familiar with the Cannon Bros, yep. and they sit there, and they watch, and they know. And they wait <laughs> until he's on a good win streak, and he's about to win, and then they press that big red button that says online bullshit, and they Fuck. screw him. He's right. Okay? So he's right. Next time you're going to say that Phil is bad at Street Fighter, just try and factually and objectively watch and give him a fair <laughs> shake, because he is the GOAT, and he has never legitimately lost, okay? Yep. Thank you. Good. Sounds good to me. Hey, I believe it. You know, 
If you say it with enough uh, gusto, I'll believe anything. So, yes, I believe that it's true. Cannon Brothers are waiting for his win streaks, and they hit that button. I like that idea. Big ups, dude. That clay kid in the house. Nice. We have a message here from a certain person you might know. I will not reveal their name. You have to guess who that is from their voice alone. Here we go. All right. Hello, everybody. This is your boy, uh, the big cat, coming to you live through the power of the Internet. From beautiful Istanbul, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Also, I'm banned on Twitter. That's that's why I'm I don't have any oh, no. activity. Hashtag oh, no. free meerkat. Yes, I'm also eating True. a delicious lachmajun, which, uh, as uh, Phil would say, is a uh, lama kum. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring some attention to something that I've been noticing on Twitter, but since I've been suspended, I can't really say anything about it. Yes. And this is the, the new trend of people posting their favorite DSP faces that they screenshot from yes. back when he used to do the short schedule. Mm-hmm. Please keep mm-hmm. doing this. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. And uh, he got to acknowledge one of them and called it Photoshop. So yes. this dude doesn't even have an idea of how ugly he is. Uh, so yes, um, thanks for uh, keeping the train running you guys i'm gonna give you a nice little kiss when i come back and uh thanks for watching to everybody else yong out <laughs> i wasn't sure where he's gonna go but he, he took it to the best place he's like you know like the new the, the new thing about this photoshop please keep doing it <laughs> <That was good. laughs> and but let's just keep the train a rolling right i mean we did get a meerkat segment so why don't we get a steven of the shed segment as well about the very same topic oddly enough all right big ups let's fucking go let's go now about that tweet somebody is this steve it yes it is <laughs> they genuinely thought that was photoshopped and wasn't like a real image and i think yeah he did i think he genuinely thought that was photoshopped yes um you see most of us have a, a sort of sense of self-image we have this idea of how we should look to other people and you know obviously that affects how we dress and present ourselves um if you know you want to look a certain way to other people you'll adjust your image accordingly you want to appear you know smart you'll wear certain clothes you'll have certain haircuts you'll shave regularly and as such you'll also be more conscious of how you are looking because you're seeing yourself in the mirror a lot you see reflections of yourself you might see photographs of yourself but The point is that your self-image, your inner sense of like how you feel you should look won't clash that much with reality because you'll have other ways of having that reality presented back to you through Mm -hmm. images, through the mirror, through your friends telling you, mate, you've got a bit of a, oh, mate, nice haircut, you know, oh, oh, you look good today, man, that's a nice top, you know. You'll have people reinforcing or criticising your image in certain ways and you'll pick up on those and you'll understand them and as such you'll understand how your self-image is coming across whereas someone like phil who's socially isolated probably doesn't have that many ways of reality pushing back to him he doesn't have many friends criticizing his appearances why now this leads me to wonder what what era phil does he see you know what i mean (laughs) the chin strap (laughs) <laughs> you know <laughs> i hope not god <laughs> you know and his sort of like main idea of what his image comes from is either going to be like a couple of glances in the mirror like usual but you know we know what he's like with hygiene and look what it took to get into shower more often so <laughs> hey he's probably low down on his list of priorities uh-huh. and the other way of like him seeing himself is like you know, blurry screen and probably just in the corner, or I don't know. I don't. Oh, he thinks he's hilarious. I'm imagining, you know, it'd be a preview. He'll have like other things around. Um, it won't be full screen, so he's probably not really like picking up the finer details. He's only getting like a general impression. It's like imagine if, like, for most of us, this is a common thing. For most of us, we'll think, you know, our hair color is fine, and then one day we look in the mirror and we see gray hairs, and that that shock, and that realization of like. Oh, Can't relate. This is what reality is like <laughs> when compared to my I'll let you know when it happens. where I thought, you know, my hair color was all right. That's why most of us can handle it, but someone like Phil seeing that image will have been more of a shock to him because it will be so far from what he thinks his inner sense of, of of image is. He thinks he looks like a certain way and the reality is he doesn't. That vast difference between the two when compared to the rest of us who have regular reinforcement and regular understanding and more care and concern 
about what we look like to other people. Mm -hmm. So for Phil, it probably was a really big shock. And to you know, to be fair, as a narcissist, it's quite unusual. Narcissists tend to give more of a shit about their impressions and what they look like. It's it's a good way of like you know seducing people into your like sphere of influence mm -hmm. and entrapping partners is to look good to look presentable <laughs> um and <laughs> all gear nap says don't know what you are seeing all i can see is prime era bill murray yes <laughs> 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 that's what phil sees he says he looks like bill murray by the way that is not a joke oh my god that is not a where joke. when oh, literally never <laughs> i gotta bring it up i will i'll show you i've <laughs> never heard this <laughs> no yeah. 90 seconds left on steve here then we'll get bill murray He's content never had that much of his ego invested in his image. He's been self-deprecating a few times about his image. And, you know, he tried an attempt there. There's plenty of ugly pictures of me. But it, it's not as... It doesn't hurt as much to do that for him because he doesn't care as much about the issue. If he cared more about his image, it would offend him if you criticised him about it. But he doesn't, so he can sort of, like, accept it a bit better. While most of that is fine for his day-to-day -day life because he doesn't go out mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any sort of like other social interactions. So there's no reality pushing back and he's perfectly comfortable in his own little safe space. And occasionally you get an image like that, that really hits home. It's like if, you know, imagine if, you know, you took selfies for a bit and then you stopped for a couple of years and then you took one again and you saw what you look like compared to years ago when you were much younger. It's sort of like that. He has this impression of what he looks like. So it's probably stopped around like, 25 to 30 and instead he's hit 41 aged <laughs> terribly because of his diet and his lifestyle and seen that and been shocked by it uh -huh. so yeah i do think that he believed that was photoshopped because i think he thinks he looks better than he does and this is what happens when you don't give a shit about your appearance for years and you need people to tell you you look better when you shower more <laughs> and dress a bit better hey Still wearing the Zelda jammies though. LTG can Yuck. break the jammies. Come on. <laughs> so there you go. I'm just gonna play it one more. Show it one more time. This is DSP is a racist saying it was photoshopped. I disagree. Uh, you can make your own conclusions. I do not think it was a photoshopped at all. Uh, I think it's just a slightly different angle. But the fact that it's this close to we can't believe it or not is kind of telling too. Uh, <laughs> but there we go. Let's get big ups to Steve on that one. I, everything you said, everything correct. Nothing wrong. Uh, let's get some Bill Murray, all right? So the, you guys have not heard, he does look like Bill Murray. He'll tell you about it right here. I look just like Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Amazing animation, fan-made, me getting slimed as Peter Venkman. Oh, it's actually my... kind of my dream. One day I would be Peter Venkman. Okay. One day I woke up, I looked in the mirror, I looked just like Bill Murray, and now I wish I never wished for that. That's a Man, meme. I wish. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. No, slimed. this is it. This is one of them. This is my... He, he does... So I know you might think he's saying a joke here, but listen to the joke. He's saying... One day I woke up and realized I look like Bill Murray and I wish I didn't hope I wished I looked like him. <laughs> that makes sense. And that's not the only time, though. I could, couldn't find that. If you find another one, feel free to DM me anybody. But I know he said it before. But let's listen to that one more time. I've had enough of this nonsense this fucking month. I've, I'm just done with it. Okay, another Made thing he's done with. I don't care. Me getting slimed as Peter Venkman. It's actually kind of my dream. One day I would be Peter Venkman. And then one day I woke up, I looked in the mirror. I looked just like Bill Murray. And now I wish I never wished for that. Because, man... Yeah. I wish I was better looking, but anyway. <laughs> See? Anyway. And sometimes here's... you get what you wish for, and then yep. you really, really regret it. Let's See? put it that way. Okay? Mm. He uh, thinks he looks like Bill Murray, and here's another chance. Bass fishing. I gotta try it. I can't not. Bass fishing. Bill Murray. You and your goddamn <laughs> bass fishing. Uh -huh. who, who doesn't love this? Come on, this is content. I look like Bill Murray today. I pretty much think I look like Bill Murray every day. There it we're, is. We're very similar. God. And like our, Told you. Our head wow. Uh, shape and structure. Oh, wait, 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 what? Very similar in, in like our, our, our head uh, shape and structure. <laughs> head shape and structure. You know, I didn't believe you, but uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> now you have to. Come on. Head shape and structure, brother. Come on. Good evening, Derek. How are you? Derek. <laughs> I had to Big play. Up Derek, I, I guess. <laughs> Hello, Derek. How are you? Crappie. But a crappie. Okay, hold on. Let me try to see. No, I screwed up. I can't find any more. I'm not doing this on stream. I was trying to find another one, but no. Um, anyways, you heard it there. He does look like Bill Murray in 
head stru- shape and structure. Okay, so you learned something today. <laughs> Let's go. Next up, we have Phil already canceled and unknown of Final Fantasy VII. Come on. Hey, Dan Percent Podcast. Phil being unknowledgeable of Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Was, again, on my bingo list, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. I really don't know how he seemed like he just forgotten the game, but he seems to only remember the certain things he has, he feels uncomfortable about, like the Walmart. Even though he seems like he misremembers Walmart events, to what he seems like he's wired in his brain. So it's going to be interesting how badly he's going to handle the, the Coast del Sol part. He thinks it's just one scene where they really expanded the Coast the the, the, the Coast del Sol event. The fact he's also journalizing Japan. Does that really that we are no different in Japan? But then again, Phil is definitely just xenophobic. He is the worst type of xenophobic. True. Very true. And the fact that Phil thinks he outlived everybody, he's already been canceled. He just doesn't want to leave. His content is failing. True. Reach, the fact he hasn't reached with view bombing is so how far he's fallen. The fact that he's trying to clickbait, he can't get back in the algorithm. He's bad as everyone else who tries to. <laughs> he doesn't realize that he's just basically a dust in the wind, a snort in the wind. So thank you to Argentina. <laughs> because he's basically he's basically going to keep being fucked with. No lube this time. Oh, God. Also, <laughs> oh, wow. Phil, Mina, if you know about Minafo, how about you spend time with your fucking wife? Oh. Got him. Woo. Woo. Brought the heat there at the end. Damn. All right. Let's see what he feels. <laughs> Big ups. Phil already canceled an unknown of Final Fantasy VII. I do agree how Phil likes to, uh, you know, say, like, I have outlasted everyone. But, like, can you really say that when your existence revolves around begging people for money every day? I mean, come on, you know? Like, yeah, I, I feel that same way. We was doing the Rooster Teeth thing the other day. I was like, yeah, technically, but, like, I'd rather, I'd rather you know, go out completely and have been on top at some point and yep. instead of, you know, living like DSP does every day. Like, I'd rather just be done. Yeah, and you don't think for one second that if Rooster Teeth said, hey, guys, we could use some support today, they would get an outpouring <laughs> of which you cannot fathom. You know what I'm saying? If they went to that level and said, hey, guys, you know what? We really, you know, we really need some help today. We're kind of, we're not going so well. We'd like to get your support. They would get so much, many times more than Philip if they did that. But unfortunately, they are that kind of human, human beings. So they just stop. So... I don't think that's the flex he believes it is. You know what I mean? But let's go to the one, the only, the Lionel. Let's go. Hey there. This is a a first time uh, that I'm sending a message. And it's because I think I just had an epiphany. And it's that I think DSP doesn't look in the mirror. Because he doesn't recognize what he looks like. And if you've seen the, what poems future posted on Twitter of the uh, guy clapping back with, uh, recent pictures that DSP could use. You know what I'm talking yes. about. And maybe this is what the corner demons is about, that if he stares at the lens of his camera for too long, he'll see his reflection in it. So he just like doesn't want to do that. So he just looks at everywhere else. You know, <laughs> food for thought, I guess. Oh, okay. That's an interesting thought, actually. So he doesn't want to look at the camera, so he has to look elsewhere because you don't like what you see there. That's interesting. That's I never thought of that take. <laughs> but... Uh, there you go. Brandon, what's your take on the corner demon theory? What is your theory on the corner demon? A lot of people are asking me. I've always thought it's just him looking for lies. Kind of like Tevin used to say, searching for Jesus or whatever. Yeah. And I, I I always stuck with that. It's just him trying to come up with whatever to say to finish the sentence. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think he just like panic looks around. That's <laughs> I think, what I yeah. think it is. I like that take, looking for the lie. That is a good way to say it. Uh, this, by the way, is from Poe's Future. I think the image he talked about. Uh, so, I mean, you could say that one picture is Photoshop, but I mean. That one on the top right is miserable. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You asked for it. <laughs> Blow it up, boys. Blow it up. Come on. Hell yeah. I mean, he looks absolutely <laughs> smashed. <laughs> <laughs> Wired right here. Hell yeah. Long night, dude. All right, this is the new Atlas bookkeeper. It's got to do it, sadly. Face reveal style. It was uh, me the whole time. Oh, shit. Breaking, breaking news, guys. All right, there we go. Let's get it in here. Come on. All right, he's in. 
There we go. Atlas the Bookkeeper is in the house perfectly lined up. All right, next one is Cyborg Crab. Let's fucking go. Come on. What's the crack, that being said? Long-time listener, first-time caller. Big Got up. a fun hypothetical for okay. you here, lads. Down. You and the pig roach have 24 hours. Yes. You choose where you go, what you do. He can't say no. He can't refuse. You got the car. You pick him up from the snort fort. And you got the whole world is your oyster. <laughs> 24 hours. Uh, personally, I'd love to see that motherfucker in a strip club just to see how long it would take him before he starts tearing <laughs> off his own skin. That's a good uh, answer. Whatever's left of it. But what's your answers? Thanks for all the content. Get well soon, Steve. Big ups. Uh, all right, Bill Murray. Oh, sorry. Atlas the Bookkeeper, your choice first. You go first. Go ahead. Uh, I'd take him to the gym. I'd make ah. him do a workout. I'd make him do my workout. <laughs> Oh, okay. I want to see him. I want to see him try and keep up. I know he can't, but I'd love to see him try. <laughs> All right, you, you know what? People would probably think he's like on rehab, you know, because he'd be like doing the bars, you know. <laughs> oh, he must be rehabbing something, but he's not rehabbing anything. He's rehabbing a streaming career. <laughs> All right, Brand Dude, where are you taking Philip? You got a car? You're in the Seattle area, I guess. Oh, you know, geez. what are you gonna do? Come on. <laughs> Well, he wouldn't want to go to Seattle because no, of all no. the crime. Hell no. Um, Dangerous there. You know, I, I was thinking like serious answer, maybe to therapy. Uh, oh, that's kind <laughs> just of serious, to talk yeah. to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly can't think of anything. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, question. I, I would is. want to, I was saying like, let's go to an arcade kind of. And like just no, that's dumb too though. I wanna just go to like a like a track and just like let's like walk around the track. Cause I think just the walking would be funny enough, you know? Like just get him to spill, you know, give me the pre stream life and he's walking, you know, with the waddle, you know. I don't know. I'm thinking I, my answer, I, I think I'd take him to Walmart just to see him complain about everybody. Yeah, that's, that's see that's that would work. That's about I just it. Wanna, yeah. Go to the, no, here's what I wanna do. Take me on an off day. That's I'll do that. Yeah, say, Ooh, right along on the word. off day. Yeah, <laughs> right along. <laughs> and I could like do like joke tweets to you guys, like, but I, like Phil would think I'm being serious, but I'm like, oh my god, guys, today was so grueling. All right, first, let me tell you this: we went to the grocery store, 15 minute drive. All right, there was traffic, took us five extra minutes, but I act like it's all like the hardest shit of all time, but it's not. Like you guys are gonna love this. It was super tough. We're trying to get cherry juice, right? Let me get this straight. It was on the top shelf. It was supposed to be in the middle shelf. What? But Philip would like get he get like excited by me agreeing with him. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. I'd uh, love it. Definitely. Chinatown. Dump run with Phil. There you go. There you go. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> dump run. Just take me to the garage. I want to see the styrofoam <laughs> piles. All right. Anyways, we got Durky in the house. Come on, Durky. Hit him with it. Hey guys. Now that we know that. Phil has self-admittedly uh, diagnosed himself with oppositional defiant disorder. Oh, what's that? I feel like that adds another layer to the whole Derek situation. Um, as we have seen, DSP is the type of person where if you present him with evidence, he'll just dismiss it or deny it or mm -hmm. uh, try and smother it or whatever, and generally just run away from it. Um, and he he knows what's going on with Derek, but the the reason why he continues to protect him, partially because he's one of his own genuine fans, but also because people want him to discuss it, want him to disavow it. And it's a situation where the more people tell him to do it, the more he's, it's like, no, no, this is my stream. Yeah. I'm going to snort and burp into the mic if I want to. And I get that. I'm going to I'm going to let Derek be my little pet. It's it's just the same how how people um they they complain about the bottle crunching and he's like, "Oh, so you don't <laughs> want the bottle crunching, huh?" And he would he would lean in and crunch it into the mic as loudly as possible. So, <laughs> just another layer to the whole Derek conundrum. I think there's something is, is to that where how he like once you say he can't he he's even said that you know if you say yeah, I can't yeah. do it well that means I'm doing it you know what I mean so like is Derek also one of those things right like people I, say I, I think it's sucked, part yeah. of that for sure because like, and he does the same thing with Kirk 
Like, people outright tell him we don't want him here. He's a problem. He's mm -hmm. doing all this weird shit. Like, just get him gone. And he gets kept around just because DSP said so. I mean, there's something yeah, to I, it. Yeah, go ahead, Brendan. I, I, I think the Derek thing, though, there's a little bit more to it. I, I think it's because he's been around for so long. Like, he was a literal child, like a teenager. Yes. When the whole, you know, ask your mom if you can use your her credit card or whatever mm -hmm. like didn't he steal his mom's credit card or something yes, yes. <laughs> so I, I think he just kind of writes Derek off and kind of ignores what he does because he doesn't think he can do things himself so he's i don't know but uh, yeah that has to be part of it the OD let me tell you thing. something there that sh if he loses Derek and jade there's no one talking in those streams guys nobody Nobody. Uh, you're forgetting about Nightbot. He, that's oh, the Nightbot. best chatter he's got. Uh, Nightbot is real, too. I forgot about Nightbot for sure. But let me tell you, dude, that's a sad fucking place, that chat room. It's all LARPers. The hell that DSP has created by his own asshole actions, by the way. It's not these fucking haters like he's going to tell you. It's these fucking... He, 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 he can't trust anybody. So any comment in chat has to be analyzed. But, but... Jade and Derek allow him to uh, some solace from that, right? So he because he doesn't have to check them. I know Jade's fine. He'll say hi to Jade two times, two or three times, because like that gives him something to do. You know what I mean? Like that's something he doesn't yeah. have to worry about. When it's everyone else, uh, though, you know what I'm saying? Everyone else is like, hold on, is this a joke or not? Hang on, you know what I mean? Along those same lines, uh, I don't know if you saw recently, but uh, he's he he reads the he pre-reads the one minute man chats now. I don't yep, know if he's yep. always yeah. done that, mm -hmm. but the one minute man sent a whole paragraph the other day and he read the entire paragraph before saying any of it out loud. <laughs> one minute man is the pay pig of pay pigs, right? The twenty five dollars every day. Yeah. That's that's commitment on another level that even Derek doesn't have because Derek doesn't spend shit. Uh -huh. But one minute man gets the pre-read. Can't even trust one minute man. That's why I think he keeps Derek around. Because if you lose Derek, now you're down to basically Jade. And Jade this is not the most talkative person, let's say that way. I mean, he, talk, he talks a lot. But he doesn't, like, add a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Time go. Yeah, she liked Chun, which is my favorite. Uh, she like Chun was a classic, uh, you know, but I, I think he's he, that is a little bit of a break from the hell that is his chat, because as you've seen, everyone is trying to fuck him in that chat. Hey, the volume's too high. Hey, the volume's too low. Hey, I can't hear you. Oh, I too loud. And it's just a nightmare. That's your fault. Well, I'll take credit <laughs> for that, but that is amazing. Like it's it must be hell, dude, without like we said, talked about on the show last week. Chat is half the fun of streaming. Without chat, it's not fun. You're just making a video. Where I mean, it's fun. We're talking. But, like, the chat adds jokes and it adds interaction, meaningful interaction. But Phil has lost that. It's even worse than that. I think chat is a negative for him. And it makes chat, you know, not fun. You know? But it's uh, that's why I think Derek stays around. Because it's someone he doesn't have to vet. He knows Derek has his best interests in mind. But, sadly for him, Derek will spam the same thing 18 times in a row. So... <laughs> You know what I mean? All right, let's move on. We got the one, we got the only, the big guy. Come on. Hey, guys. Something that's come up a lot is why Phil is the way he is. I know a lot of people want to blame his parents or the fact that Phil is an only child, but I think it might be something a little different. I think it actually might be his post-nasal drip and the fact that it was never really treated. I can tell a lot of people in the detractor community haven't really met other people with post-nasal drip, mm -hmm. hence why so many people still think Phil might be doing drugs or something to explain all his snorting. But I have met a couple of people with post-nasal drip when I was younger. Even as a kid, I thought they were all assholes, and I hated them. <laughs> Mostly because it was really fucking annoying to be around them, because hearing someone randomly snort in the middle of class was distracting. <laughs> and of course, no one was allowed to complain about it because it was a valid medical condition. Uh -huh. So I wonder if that's why Phil is the way he is. Imagine what would happen to you if when you were younger, every single person you interacted with got annoyed at your presence and was trying to get back at you because of how annoying you were and how protected you were by the teachers because of some valid medical reason. Maybe that's more of a Steve of the back surgery kind of question. Mm -hmm. Because even as a kid, I knew these pieces of shit knew that snorting was annoying. 
and that they literally did nothing to stop it. Now that's interesting because we got the wrestling take. Now it could be, did that also add to his assholeism? Is that, hey, this guy's a real problem. We can't make fun of him, but it is annoying to everybody. And Philip is not the kind of person that's going to worry about everyone else's well being. You know, he's going to snort his head off, right? Go ahead. The, the thing with that, um, he's able to control his snorts when yes. he's in an interview, when he's next to Cat. Well, mostly. But he's able to either sneak one in there or not do it at all. Uh -huh. So does he even have post nasal drip? And do we know how long he's had it? Like, did he have it as a kid or? Well, he's had it. He, I think he said many times he's had it his whole life. That's for sure. You know. Okay. So, but how much? He definitely can control it. I mean, let's get real. He can control yeah. it. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, I don't know. It. it, it I don't know. Who? Who the fuck knows? But I do like this idea of. It's kind of a power trip thing. I, I can snort and you got to deal with it, assholes. You know what I'm saying? There is something to that, I bet, you know? You got to deal with my snorts, assholes. You know? But, but he asked, he asked specific, because he, he mentioned specifically, like, if everybody you met at, like, in an early age hated you because you, 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 you know, snorted, annoyed the shit out of them and were protected because of it. But to me, that's still not... Like, if any normal person would understand, like, I'm being an obnoxious asshole, and even though, let's say, there is nothing I can do about it, there's nothing I could do, right? <laughs> yeah. You would, you should go out of your way to be a better person so that people do like you, because being liked and being, uh, you know, uh, accepted, as he so desperately wanted to be all of the time, yep. is something that people care about. So if you have this thing that is going against you at all times, you should strive to, you know, be better than that and and kind of counteract that but he just never did yeah like yeah like you know like that's a pretty powerful uh incentive in high school is like to be to fit in right we all want to be like in a group and stuff and phil wanted that too so how much was he holding it back then i wonder you know what i mean like was he a big snorter in high school i don't think we ever got that story was he all over the place snorting or was he holding it back then because he wanted to be accepted and then when he wasn't accepted because he wasn't big an athlete i fuck this shit rest of my life i'm snoring i don't give a fuck anymore you know that's something uh you should ask some fgc guys did he snort back in tournaments yes jaha please but, answer that yeah. yes was but he... if you say his name enough he'll be here yes <laughs> i'm an alcoholic <laughs> stop all right let's go next up we have another kaching of the ring competitor known as super chuffer and yes yeah, steve of the day great question because so uh, phil was on a radio station radio show called uh alphaism radio and he did not snort on that but that was on a phone call like literal phone or a headset i guess so was he more cognizant of not snorting there he definitely didn't though to my memory so there there you go was he holding it back even then i don't know uh but let's get to next catching of the ring competitor the one the only super chuffer in the house come on Hi, Super Chuffer. I'd just like to tell you a quick story. About Hold on. Sorry, Super Chuffer. So Native Mamba, I did ask Jaha if he snorted back then. Do you remember the answer, Native Mamba? Because I don't. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> Do you remember the answer? That's the key point. So anyway, Super Chuffer, sorry about that. I'll restart that. Here we go. Come on. Get in about here. how when I was younger, I went out and there was again. an electromagneto power storm that hit my house. Yes. And my parents told me that <laughs> a lightning bolt that they saw saw come down from heaven mm -hmm. hit a telegraph pole it exploded Whoa. the telegraph pole what? into molten, molten lava and Whoa. all the electricity powered <laughs> electromagneto surge flowed down the wires they could all see it like oh demons God. flowing into the houses all the houses caught on fire Holy at my shit. house there was several several two uh, a p one or two a pc completely defragmented <laughs> and dissolved oh into molten lava pieces on the floor ashes oh my ashes. god there were several fire engines oh my god all right be good if you can't be good you're naughty oh my god that's such a great story <laughs> <laughs> Super chuffer. that sounds tough i bet if you call back next week it, you tell the exact same story though nothing would change i don't think just I just gotta ask how your printer was doing because I know your your yes. one what PCs were completely you know destroyed. But yes. how how are your printers doing, man? And also the consoles because I know consoles like PCs if they get struck by lightning they're out instant. It's like fuck you're done. But consoles 
If they get hit by lightning, they are strong. So what happened? Please let us know about that. The consoles are much stronger. Uh, so please let us know what happened there. Brandon, if you didn't hear the beginning of the stream, you're probably like, what are they talking about? But uh, we did listen to a story <laughs> of Philip tell the same story three different times, and it, 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 it resulted in three different varieties of the same story, as you might expect. But uh, obviously okay. it was about uh, power hitting, uh, well, a power... Sometimes the lightning hit the f the telephone pole. Another time it hit the telephone pole and, and caused a fire. And the other time just the power went out. So, anyways, I'm not going to run the stream. Thank it. All right. Danny in the house. Come on. We've got to burn through. we got an, 30 minutes left. Stay away from that being said. I just had uh, one thought about him skipping um, Thursday's uh, late night stream. Something doesn't um, add up. He it says it's something personal. Yeah. But you know he's not going to seek therapy because nothing's ever his fault. And you know he doesn't really care about being married. He thinks everything's perfectly fine the way it is, roommate status. Mm -hmm. But could it be that he's talking to a lawyer about the tax fraud allegations? No. I mean, he did admit to it on side scrollers, and it just takes one phone call <laughs> to the IRS and open all the can of worms of, you know, your falsified paperwork. I don't know. It seems pretty possible i don't know what do you guys think so the the random the random day off that he sometimes said his tax but sometimes said personal stuff i don't want to share or something what did he say about that do you guys remember brand dude he said the, the extra day off you know what we're talking about yeah i know what you're talking about yeah so um, how did he explain that i can't remember exactly he didn't exactly say taxes though right he said something else yeah he just said i think i have some personal stuff i need to attend to or something like that Mm -hmm. So who knows? Who the fuck knows? You know, but could it be? <laughs> could it be tax guy? Oh, he said taxes no. afterwards. The guy with long hair says. So there you go. Normal taxes that take, you know, 18 years or whatever. It takes a fucking month for him to do his taxes because he's independent and doesn't have any help. You know, all that stuff. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. He was back on back and forth with the, oh, it's personal. It's taxes. So like it was just question mark, question mark, normal DSP shit. I didn't even. <laughs> I I was been scrolling Twitter, you know, see, trying to see for Prome's future, and Meerkat is right. Everyone is just posting pictures from the from the shorts, and I love them. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> when you see Jaha in a parking lot. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> All right. Next up, Kenny B. Come on, Kenny. Hit us with it. Hey, guys. Great work like always. Uh, I just can't stop thinking about the time DSP said that he could take on Mike Tyson in a fight. Remember ah, that? Yes. With that said, <laughs> who, do you th who would you like to see DSP take on in a fight? Or, like, what would your dream matchup be? Or who... Who do you think he's actually capable of taking on in a fight? I okay. just, I just I want to you. pick your guys' brain about that. So, guys, I'm going to ask you to answer this question. Not who's going to beat his ass, right? So, Jaha's out, guys. Who do you think would make a good fight with him, okay? So, like, we're going for entertainment. We're not going for him getting his ass beat. You know what I'm saying? So, Atlas, I'll throw it to you first. We need a legitimate fight. Not like Jaha's going to kick his ass, which you know would happen. So we're looking for a good fight where, like, he might actually stand a chance and make it entertaining. We're just looking for entertainment. Like, it would be a, a comedy match. Well, okay. So I'll let you go that far, but you can't go to, like, it's going to be end up with Phil getting his ass beat. Like, that might happen, but that, like, Vegas would have a tough time calling the fight. You know, putting odds on the fight. Right. Let's say that. It wouldn't uh, okay. be, like, a, you know, um, an amazing favorite. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be kind of, like, who knows? I, 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 off the top of my head, I'd like to see him go in with uh, Pro Jared because Pro Jared is real thin, yeah, stick like, great. and he's got some reach on him. But I don't think, I don't know that he's physically all that athletic either. <laughs> all right, Brand Dude, your task next. For, go ahead. For, for who I would want to see, I was going to say maybe like Keemstar or Panda Oh, Lee. come on. Oh, <laughs> so Keemstar would absolutely kick his ass. Panda Lee, now that's, now you, you had my I interest, think that would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or or his dad. That That's my other one. His dad would be good too. I think his dad would beat his ass. I think his hard. dad would mop him. <laughs> absolutely. I don't think he stands a chance. I think there would be some anger in those punches too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
This one's for the trout. Whoa, boom! This one's for the job I gave you that you threw away. Whoa, boom! That'd be hype. All right. Anyways, a lot of good answers in chat. The VR girl. Now that oh boy oh the 12 year old i <laughs> yes. like that i like that uh, <laughs> called her by her name wolf girl 666 wasn't it i think <laughs> something like that yeah. uh spoonie now spoonie is of slight build as well very let's say hermit-esque as well that's a good one i justine i just need to wipe the floor with him dude she's she's in shape <laughs> that would not even be close i saw cat uh, as in Catherine burnell I think Catherine Bernal would win too. I mean, who you got on that one? That's stuttering a, Craig. A stuttering Craig would wipe, wipe the floor, wipe the floor with him, dude. <laughs> stuttering Craig was an athlete. He did a uh, slam That's ball, true. dude. <laughs> so that was a pro. Everybody sport. knows slam ball. Oh, no, obviously, Atlas, the bookkeeper does it. Well, I don't either, really. But someone told me about it. Brandon, do you know what slam ball is? If I said it, the trampoline basketball thing. Bingo, yeah. bingo, bingo. All right. Okay. Uh, how about Officer Sant? Jenna would, oh, that would be, fight would be over so fast if Jenna was in there. Can you imagine that? Come on. <laughs> but she had a heater in the video, so yeah, she'd do it to him. <laughs> she get, and like Alpha Omega Sin over Air Raid Lord. Oh, <laughs> Jake James Lugo. Now that's oh a fight. Oh my God. You ever seen a man get skinned in the ring? Because that's what we're going to see. <laughs> Jake James Lugo's coming after his skin. Dude, we got to set this up. Keem, get in contact. He, see, the bad point is Phil wouldn't do it because he's not a lolicow. What's the number he would take? Now, Cyrax now, Cyrax would be a good fight, wouldn't it? I think that might be close. Don't you think? Like, Cyrax is very small. But, actually, he's kind of scrawny too, isn't he? That's tough. Yeah, he's very he's very scrawny. He kind of looks like a crackhead. Yeah. And when I say kind of, I mean very much looks like a crackhead. Melanie Mack. Mm, she kind of looks in shape too, doesn't she? I don't think she I don't think Phil would have a chance against her. Tough. Tough tough question. That's a great question though. That's a great fucking question. LTG. Oh, come on. LTG. Oh. The Wolverine figure itself. That would be, that's a good fight. That'd oh, good fight. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'm putting my money on the toy. <laughs> oh, come on. Meerkat. Meerkat would wipe the floor with him. Come on. Meerkat's got the reach, the height, everything. Review, bro. Review. <laughs> no, no. All right. All right. I like where we're going. Only here. We're if he's got to have the suit on. He's got to be fitted, you know? Yeah, yeah. You have to wear your normal gear. So Phil would have to be in a crispy shirt with the PJ pants neck phones he's got to oh, wear neck the neck phones on? at all times if they come really? off it's instant disqualification it's against the rules i know rooster teeth is dead but we got to get deathmatch on this you know what i'm saying <laughs> like get that <laughs> oh man we can't make it happen in real life but we can definitely get deathmatch on that we'll we'll buy koji oh kojima kojima would, would wreck him dude kojima's in good shape and he's older than phil but he looks younger than phil that's not a good combination <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of crazy how much younger he looks than DSP. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good mix. <laughs> All right, let's go next. We have an uh, interesting message here from the... Uh, I'm just going to read the name as I see it. Cat Burnell Pleaser. So that's the name. Okay. Hey, guys. Sorry for any background noise. I'm doing this at work. All right, we got Anyway. Working um, style. Phil, I'm not sure if it was WPIG or just a more recent stream, mm -hmm. but Phil was talking about he got an ottoman to, like, get ready in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, first yep. of all, he only goes out of his house once a week. Second of all, he only changes – he doesn't wear shoes in his house, and he only puts a button-up shirt on with fucking pajama bottoms. <laughs> and it made me just think, like, of a lawyer or somebody who has to wear a suit to work, waking up in the morning, sitting on the ottoman, tying up the shoes, mm -hmm. getting the tie tied, you know, going out. His stay-at-home wife is waving to him from the driveway. And I think about Phil just rolling out of bed, taking off the greasy gamer shirt, sitting mm -hmm. on the ottoman, buttoning up the button-up shirt, and that's it. <laughs> And then he walks up to his office door and he has like one of those signs that you turn around when you open and close. And the cat's just waving at him with Jasper in her arms, like from the hallway as he shuts the door. That's a good mental picture. Don't forget the the resting 
the the hallway rest stop, Wait, which what? was how what? he. Oh, you didn't hear this, brand dude? No. Oh, hold on. I, I I got the tweet. We can hear it now. Oh yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. Mister Stuff was on that. He has a uh, he has a new ottoman, and that is for resting in the hallway. So, and here we go. I want to make sure. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So I don't know about you know. You've probably seen the inside of Phil's house from his own streams, of course. Yeah. And you know the hallway. Uh, it's it's a normal house hallway size, but Philip. Uh, decided that he needs a uh, rest stop. So I'm just going to stop talking. We'll just play it, all right? Let's hear about this. This long storage. Uh, but a funny thing happened. So oh, we've always funny. had this long storage ottoman, all right, at the end of our bed. When I first moved in here a decade ago, the ottoman was, it kind of matches our living room couch downstairs, which is a sectional. It's the same material. It looks the same. Mm -hmm. It was meant to come as almost like a set. And so when I moved in here, I always put that ottoman, I put it at the bottom of the bed, the foot of the bed. The problem was I didn't really measure and having that ottoman there, there's just not a lot of room to walk between the ottoman and then with the dresser that we have against the other wall in the back of the, the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of narrow in there, but I just always left it there. And the funny part is I remember distinctly when I first got the ottoman, I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. I'll be sitting on this all the time, getting dressed in the morning <laughs> and I'll use it for storage. But because of the positioning of the ottoman, you basically never use it. It just sits there for sh for looks, mm -hmm. but you never really use it for anything because there's not a lot of room. So my wife and I moved the ottoman into the hallway to do the va the uh, shampooing of the carpet, and we realized something. We're like, this is really nice in the hallway. Like this, it's it's a perfect thing you put against the wall. It the hallway is wide enough that it doesn't make the hallway super narrow. You sit on it like, oh, this is nice and comfy out here. It's actually a nice little resting spot yeah. right in the middle of the hallway where you can relax. <laughs> And we opened it up. We're like, we don't really have anything okay. significant in this thing. We can start using this for storage now. Like, and then we go in the bedroom. Now the bedroom is just way more open because it doesn't have a giant storage ottoman blocking the walkway through the bedroom. It feels way more open space. We're like, why don't we do this earlier? Because you know you don't think of it. It's just oh, it's just always been there. Right? Mm. It's been there for a decade. You don't think to move it. And you move it like oh what? my god, like this is way better. So. So he said it himself. It's a, and Mr. H Mr. Uh, Hut stuff though has created the image for us to understand. That's how long the hallway is. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a we got a nice rest stop. <laughs> is that near the stairs? Like, is that why it's there? It's when they go upstairs. <laughs> Oh, oh my, my god. god, you might be onto something. Is that, that why? I don't know. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> it is. I didn't even think about that. Oh my god. Walk up the steps. It's like 10 step. Hang on. <laughs> Yo, that's bad. It's getting bad in the snort fort. We're oh adding pit god. stops right above the stairs. That's one step above the acorn lift. Oh, God. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a staging area for going up and down the steps. <laughs> you know when you're climbing like a big mountain, they'll give you like a rest stop, you know? You take a break, and you're like, all right, we got 1,000 feet left. That's where you. That's what this is. So that makes sense. You know, you got to get your... Refreshments, drink, take a rest, get your breath, and then you go down the steps or up the stairs. And yeah, it's like a base camp. There we go. Good way to say that. This is base camp or the hallway. Hallway base camp. <laughs> and that is I just want to know what kind of snacks they're gonna have at the at the pit stop here, because oh, you know what you know we're getting yeah. hungry. Uh huh. They got the storage. <laughs> so we got the yeah, what do we got in there? We got the nuts and stuff left over from the woodland critters that gamer day. mix. We gotta get the, gamer the gamer mix. trail mix style. Caffeine, Jolt Cola, ca caffeine marshmallows, <laughs> or whatever the fuck he had in DSP tries it. Neo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a deep cut. Yeah, definitely. Random <laughs> kaching of the ring, kachings in there. You know, if you want a sandwich, you know, you might want that. Uh, so the, some of the sauce and Tupperware containers. You never know when you might need some authentic Italian sauce. Uh, so yeah, a lot of things go in there. Nice thing, gin. Nice. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Mr. Beast bars. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, real quick, I do want to play this too. I forgot about it, but I wanted to play this. Uh, have you ever heard of an amazing story from Philip Brunel about his Halloween? I just want to play one part of it because uh, it has to do with Wolverine. And we all love Wolverine here, obviously. Who doesn't? Obviously. Uh -huh. So this is from 2014. Philip's talking to us about Halloween. Okay. 
I think I know what this is. He's going to tell us a story is. of a, uh, 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 just, just listen. Just listen. Local store, and at that time, the store that I would go to was actually called Bradley's. Oh, we're not going to hear about Bradley's. Our, Bradley's was like the smaller, Who cares? Truck, muscles on it, you know, yeah, yeah. body, and make it to the front of your body, or you would step into... <laughs> And it would go up around your body and make your body look like the character. So for, for Skeletor, it would have fake muscles on it, you know? It would be blue for Skeletor. And the like really a costume? shitty, go ahead. shitty uh, <laughs> masks were... I don't even know how to describe oh, the masks because they were so shitty. Plastic? It was like a half... Like, imagine the, front, dude, the dude. front half of my face from here on <laughs> cut off, okay? Cut my face off, and it was hollow. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> he's, he's describing a mask. All right. How do you describe a mask? This there's many ways to describe a mask. You could say something that makes you look like something else you put on your face. You look like someone else when you put it on your face. This is how DSP decides to describe a mask. All right. Here it is. Let's hear it one more time. Shitty. It was like a half. Like imagine the front the front half of my face from here on. <laughs> cut off okay cut my face off oh my and it was God. hollow but it was a thin oh my plastic God. and you would put it on your face it would never really fit properly it had a crappy rubber band that would attach it to your head and you it's just a shitty like, plastic mask yeah. that's all you could have, that's all you had to say but we get so much more your your breath because it only had a <laughs> yeah, all right okay. yeah someone just said in the stream chat they cut your tongue you're right if you actually <laughs> Talked and your tongue your <laughs> will cut your fucking tongue. It was just, I don't know, but this was all they had. You go to the store. That's literally all, right, all the Halloween the, here, costumes. That's how they. That wasn't even the good part. Me. Here we go. Did that and it was getting older. Okay. Because right. the X Men cartoon was here on TV and it here was go, here huge and big and popular, right? Yes, big and popular. And we went to the store and we were looking at the different <laughs> costumes that they had for X Men. And they were crappy. They were just like the I ones for, that I just uh -huh. described for He-Man. And even the, like they would have fake little crap claws that looked like shit. They were just terrible. terrible they were, you know, they don't want Sucks. kids actually having claws and running around like Wolverine stabbing people in the face, right? So I wanted to be Wolverine that year. And I said to my parents, I could fucking do better than what's in that goddamn store. I know. <laughs> you I hear that, Linda? Uh. <laughs> I could do fucking better than this, Linda. I had the the tools to do it, I could make myself an awesome Halloween costume of awesome. Wolverine. Okay. So my parents said, well, how much money do you think you would need? And I was like, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks? And I remember I went to an arts X and crafts that. store. I bought high-grade cardboard for arts and crafts. I bought lots of 20 bucks. Big up for high-grade cardboard. Lots of glue, tape, stuff <laughs> like that. I went to the, uh, the store, uh, the grocery store, and I bought tin foil of all things, aluminum tin foil. <laughs> Shout out to foil of all things. Aluminum like what? Tin foil. That's that's my favorite. Aluminum and tin. It's the combination style. <laughs> <laughs> the material is kind of in the name, but all right. Aluminum tin foil. Okay. And I went home, and it took me about a week. And every night I would spend two or three hours on this after I did my homework, and I fucking constructed. <laughs> claws for wolverine <laughs> they were actually three-dimensional they weren't thin they were three-dimensional like you know uh triangular uh parallelogram claws? kind of things that would... um <laughs> like no what <laughs> no That's not the, the word <laughs> uh, so we got 3d now i want you to listen carefully to the shape so i'm gonna this is a test Please tell me the shape that we're talking about here, all right? I want you to get the shape. All right, here we go. Green. They were actually three-dimensional. Okay. They weren't thin. They were three-dimensional, like, you know, uh, triangular uh, parallelogram kind of things that would come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you getting the mental picture there of that shape? Because I'm not. <laughs> triangular parallelograms. Come out of a base. Of cardboard we're just happy they were 3D it. instead of uh, 2D. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> it's tough to make the 2D claws, yes. <laughs> oh, shit. And it was awesome. It, they were shiny, just like Wolverine's claws. And, I mean, they were <laughs> not the sturdiest of things, but they were really cool. It was a cool homemade project. And I remember that year I got invited to a Halloween party uh, at... You know what letter to, to spam in X, chat for this X, one? X. <laughs> but wait, we gotta hear how, how how do you think people took this costume, guys? How, you you'll you'll never guess how people took this costume. What people thought of this beautiful shining costume? School from a kid at school. We all went over his house, and you know everyone's showing up with their typical outfits. They're showing up. And, you know, oh, this kid, you know, is what's his name with the shitty the shitty mask or whatever. And I walked in, and what? I had a Wolverine mask, 
the Wolverine shirt and <laughs> fucking real claws. And I walked in and everyone's jaws went. <laughs> oh my God, Main dude. Character. <laughs> I was just about to say, he's got main character syndrome so bad, dude. He really thinks he's him. Everyone's jaws. Everyone's jaws. <laughs> Everyone's jaws dropped, dude. Everyone's jaws. It looked like dropped. that. He yeah. walked in, and they all—that's them. That's what people did looked at right there. Like, oh, look at the claws. <laughs> Real claws. And I walked in, and everyone's jaws went. Oh, and kids were running up to me like, "How the? <laughs> Your dad made that for you." I was like, "My dad didn't even touch this. I did this myself." I spent a dude. This is unbelievable. Like I just heard this last night for the first time. I never heard this before. Can oh, really? you believe this whole story? <laughs> People ran up to me, okay, and told me, your dad made this, didn't he? And I was like, nope, he never touched it, guys. The levels of narcissism required for this story are code black narcissist level. You know what I mean? Like this is unreal. <laughs> I I I think maybe some of this happened. Like maybe yeah, yeah. two people came up to him or like, oh, those are pretty cool, man. And oh, he's like, yeah. thanks, I made I it agree. myself. I but agree. he just exaggerates it. Like thirty years later, I think probably someone said those look cool, right? Like maybe one dude said that looks pretty cool, and that was it. And you know the crew he's rolling with, right? I mean, I don't need to remind you guys the crew he's rolling with. <laughs> you know, they might have said anything. You know, you can't really understand what they're saying. But this is. Well, one guy had some mental problems, so oh, yeah, yeah, he definitely. He was, wild. <laughs> he was the crazy guy. You don't know what he's saying. <laughs> but anyways, I had to play that. Because let's give a few shout outs here before we say goodbye. Your DoorDash is here to wipe away. The DoorDash is here. Wipe away your tears, says King Eagles. Big ups, King Eagles, legend. Uh, <laughs> Dare Ish's house. Mrs. Maximus, big ups. Meth Bear says, I'd ho oh, about the boxing question. I'd hog tie Phil and drop him to play with OIC. Okay. Now that's a good boxing match some people would pay for, for sure, Meth Bear. Uh, big ups to Lord Kane 666. I specialized in Dentonese. He didn't catch me yet. Oh, Lord Kane is LARPing in chat. Big ups, Lord Kane, for all the LARPers out there. Uh, Tricorder Transmission says, DSP versus Melanie Mac. I think Melanie Mack takes that, though. Atlas, what are you? You're an athlete style. Who's taking that fight? Um, How tall is Melanie I, Mack? I don't know. I Nothing that matters. I was, I was really just about to say, I've, I've only ever seen her the one time, and she looked really thin. She looked uh, kind of frail looking to me. Mm -hmm. I, I think DSP's just got, uh, even though he's got muscle atrophy, I think he's still got a weight advantage. I think so. I think so. So, oh, Meth Bear, that was about the 24 hours with Phil. Okay, that's what he would do with his 24 hours with Phil. Oh, send if him to Liz go play with OIC. <laughs> Yug. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather do Derek. I think that's more <laughs> scary. <laughs> Derek Hill in the house says the snorting is his gimmick. Oh, that's a good gimmick. Pretty hype gimmick. Very funny. Movie sign says real claws. <laughs> yes, they were real. A tin aluminum foil, my friend. Shorts Vault in the house says, can we get kid with shitty mask as a card? That's an idea. I'm, I'm open for it. <laughs> and uh, Speedy says that Wolverine story is the exact same thing as that analogy he gave when he got his ass handed to him by that Luke player. He's the tryhard here. Absolutely. He definitely try hard, try hard with his costumes. Say what you will. They were pretty cool, though. And everyone told him, too. He was very. He was the bell of the ball at that fucking Halloween party. Let me tell you. I mean, All the right, claws me... were 3D triangular parallelogram style, so which, that's which pretty is, impressive. That's my favorite shape, honestly, is the triangular parallelogram. Always been a fan of that 3D. shape. Uh -huh. And it, it makes sense. Um, let's get to one more message before we get out of here. Name placeholder in the house. Let's go. Come on. Morning, Alt. Uh, listening from Australia. Oh, Australia. Big ups. Uh, from my own Wakando. Oh, Wakando. I heard the segment about Phil saying he looks like Bill Murray. Yes. I mean... <laughs> He's not wrong, but it's more like a Madame Tussauds sort of uh, wax model that's melted Bill Murray rather ah. than the actual Bill Murray. Okay. I'm or it could board. be that Bill Murray from Zombieland, but like the dead version. Ooh. Either way, he still looks like shit. And even with the rant earlier about the Photoshop pictures, mm -hmm. I mean, tit for tat, it's just two piles of dog shit at the end of the day. So what if one pile of dog shit has a bit of brightness editing over it? It still looks bad. Great point. Great point. Uh, so he, but now we're saying he looks like Bill Murray, but the melted version. And I guess that's more on par. 
uh, with with what the actual situation is. <laughs> but well, having yes. seen some of those wax sculptures, uh, you could say that about just about anybody sometimes, because some of those are a- absolutely hideous and nothing like the person. Yes. So we're casting a wide net on that one. <laughs> yeah, I I think he looks more like Ricky Gervais. Yes. Yeah, I think that one's Absolutely. more accurate. That's, that's better. Yeah, it's it's like a less cool Ricky Gervais, and Ricky Gervais isn't the most cool looking guy already, but less cool. You know what I mean? Like hard to <laughs> explain. But there, yeah, that's what I, I agree with that too. He's got to play. We get the biopic out there. My first pick is Ricky Gervais. I think um, for funniness, it'd be Steven Seagal. But if we want authenticity, we need Ricky Gervais in there. Um, so Netflix, just let us know. We'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, Jay Wusso in the house says King Cobra versus DSP. Ooh, who's winning that? King Cobra versus DSP. Now that's a tough one. I think I think Cobra's got it. I believe in my boy. My my Boglum is going to pull out. Can he use the wands? Because they do have magic. Just want to know. Well, it's part of the it's part of the the <laughs> shtick, isn't it? He's okay. gonna he's gotta wear the hat. He's gotta oh, wear the okay. collar, and he's yeah. got, he gets to bring his wand. So Cobra he, instantly. I, okay. Yeah, you know, I didn't even think of the wands before. Yeah. But yeah, he's got he's of like course. got the, the rings and stuff too. That's, that's oh yeah 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 yeah. And he's got the uh, well, he doesn't anymore. He's got his uh, chameleon as the tag partner. <laughs> oh, his uh, his bearded dragon puff. <laughs> yeah, Rest in peace. Unfortunately, he's gone. Yes. Well, Phil has some uh, tag partners as well. If we can do deceased pets, we can have cinnamon and raisin. Go, you know. Bunny. Bunny. Absolutely. Classic. Woodley critters. All yeah. of them? Yeah, oh, now, now we're, we're cooking. Talking. Now we're cooking. All right. Make it happen. Stephen Hawking in the house. Very, very uh, famous Stephen Hawking says, I want to joust Phil in my wheelchair. Take your bets. Well, is Philip also in a wheelchair or not? Or oh, the ants. Oh, God, the ants. Phil would have the ant <laughs> army behind him. That's that 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 sways me a little bit. Anyways, let's stop this nonsense. Big up, massive ups to Brand Dude Alex, the bookkeeper. They had so little uh, uh, notice that I wanted them to be on the show, and they both agreed very graciously, my friends. Uh, I'll put Brand Dude's link first in the chat. Brand Dude, anything you want to pimp out, please, please do so. Yeah, I'm working on stuff behind the scenes. I got okay. uh, DSP video actually in the works, and uh, more streams coming, uh, more chill times, chill vibes, and and yeah, that's pretty much it. There you go. And Atlas, as I always say, has videos coming out basically every hour. So just go to his channel and you're going to see new stuff. Is that safe to say, Atlas? I don't want to say anything, put any words in your mouth. but Well, except for tomorrow, because this cut it into my editing time. So ah. it'll be back. Videos back Monday, but yes. uh, stream Saturday for sure. Get fucked. Atlas viewers yeah. waiting for his video. Yes. All right. Anyways, uh, uh, business style announcements, of course, one week till Ching the Ring. Get hyped for that. Coming up next seven days. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Meerkat back in the house. We will have uh, Sam back in the house, hopefully, as well. Full full crew ready to rock without Steve, of course. Still waiting for Steve to get back. Uh, this month, we are going to do the one-year anniversary of the, uh, the interview style show as well. And uh, tonight, I'll be under Tractor Beam at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're all fucking legends. Thanks so much for hanging out. And once again, thanks, Brandon and Atlas. You guys are legends. And I will not forget it. See you, everybody. See ya. Let's go upset. It's been too long. This one goes out to the one and only, the big cat, the fat cat. Big ups. I first saw you in Burger King You took two seats Cause that ass is way too big Had a boyfriend I realized But you told him lies With your raccoon eyes The DoorDash is here Wipe away your tears Got you extra fries And they taste just right Have no fear There's no trolls here Tevin made you cry With those raccoon eyes Raccoon eyes Raccoon eyes Tevin
want some sushi like you were the queen let me run some errands while you sleep i can watch you play skyrim all day this week have no fear there's no trolls here kevin made you cry with those records In reality, like I tell you guys, every day when I wake up, that's the best day of my life. I feel like this next day is awesome. I, I, get, I have a, a beautiful wife who I love so much. She loves me and a family, and Jasper, and, and you know the things we get to do together. And I definitely want more time with them and more family time. But I absolutely love my life today compared to how it used to be. Seriously, all those years back then, you'd be like, it's a whirlwind of crap. It was me, and by the way, I've told you guys about my past. I used to drink way too much. I would be drinking constantly, all the time, because I was so stressed out. I was, I, honestly, when I started with this whole thing, I was depressed many years ago, you know, a decade ago. I didn't like my life or anything. And basically, liquor was the way to kind of get through that. You know, it was, oh, I hate my life, I hate, I hate who I am, so let me just drink it all away and just keep pumping out fucking YouTube videos. I don't have to do that shit anymore, you know? Like, I'm happy with who I am. I actually don't think clicking like on a live stream helps at all. So it really doesn't matter if this, this stream gets 100 likes or two. I don't think it affects it. I'm horny as hell.